here we are in match two. Uh, we won the die roll, so we have it all. We really do have it all. It sounds a bit more sketchy on the play than that statement would imply, actually. It doesn't do an awful lot. It, it, it's really leaning hard on the shock. Um, but I think the overall quality is so high. Uh, if we draw a land, we're you know we're, we're really doing quite well. Even if we never draw a land after that, and we're just kind of um, leaning on Trinketeer, uh, an acrobatic maneuver, it's often you know it's often fine. We would like to draw more lands though. Please, uh, if we could draw some lands, that'd be nice. Okay, the hand is now like very fine, especially against like a blue deck that's going to be. A bit slow in setting up. At least we hope. Maybe it's blue red. Ooh, called it. It's based on my uh, extensive knowledge. Not at all a random guess. Um, okay, I'm actually pretty happy drawing lands. Uh, as I say, our hand is pretty good if we draw lands. We also have this really good combination, right, of Scrapper Champion and Build to Smash. Where I'm quite happy to play Builder Smash as one mana deal six to opponent rather than one mana deal three. Uh, obviously, Scrapper Champion has the small downside of not being an artifact creature. Giving it double strike plus three plus three and trample sounds well. Giving it plus three plus three and trample to a double strike it sounds a bit busted. Okay, opponent has nothing apparently, so we'll uh, get in there while we can. Shielded Ether Thief. So there's a few different lines I can take here, right? I could make this creature, I could make this guy bigger to kill the Ether Thief. But then I'm not doing anything else for the rest of my turn, I'm just passing and holding up Acrobatic Maneuver. Like, it protects one of my good creatures. Um, but I don't think I need to do any of the, I don't think I need to do that. I'm much happier committing a creature to the board and uh, getting to untap and hold up like everything. Because our opponent missed a land drop, I'm especially happy about doing that. Okay. Ether's Roop is kind of interesting. Makes it a 2 4. Which means that when we swing in with this Master Trinketeer, he will suspect a trick. As rightly he should. And the Scrapper Champion. The Scrapper Champion, obviously, is just really good. Uh, I almost don't want to use the Pilt to Smash. I feel like it's it's going to be very good with the Scrapper Champion. It has this like really high potential, especially when we can just kind of pass holding up Trinketeer's activation. It's very little uh, downside to that play. I think I'm going to do that. Um, actually, our opponent is a land drop, two land drops. Uh, I think I want to end the game as quickly as possible. And if we get three damage in for free, then uh, you will hear no complaints from my end. This is going to draw a card, unfortunately. Uh, at least if I was him, I would probably block with it and then draw a card. Okay. That's interesting. Oh, okay. That I'm not sure about. I'm not sure if I agree with that uh, line. I guess, okay, I guess it's fine, right? Like, I'm probably killing the Swooper. Um, no matter what. Yeah, okay. Okay, the more I think about it, the more it's fine. So, future reference, this guy's really, really busted. Um, Imperious Perfect was a pretty good card. Imperious Perfect was a better card than this, uh, but this guy does a really good Imperious Perfect impression in this format, uh, and has a bit more synergy with the things you're doing. Maybe not. Elves had a lot of synergy. Lorem was a big high synergy set. Imperious Perfect was a busted card and should never have been printed on Uncommon, uh, and there is a reason this guy's a rare. Uh, cards that, you know, make... use just mana to make tokens, um, especially tokens that they themselves then pump, uh, which is why the... Um, Ooh, that's a that's a funky little combo. Funky little combo right there. Um, 
not forget to activate our master triggers here. So, let's think about this. He blocks, he makes it a 1-5. That's all he can do, and then we can kill it with shock. At, that's, at this point, once like all of this is in play, I'm pretty happy killing it with shock. Especially if it stops him from drawing more cards, which stops him from getting back into the game properly. Um, yeah, I think this game's probably going to be over soon. Uh, I'm going to pass holding up acrobatic maneuver. I think Rex's Fire Weaver is just not going to be relevant, and keeping this guy around is uh, going to be a, a fairly big deal. We could also just cycle like a random maneuver if we wanted to, but we have other things to do with our mana. We're not very interested. We don't care that much about drawing cards, we care about the game ending. And the game ended. Alright, so he's clearly much more of an artifact deck than um, our last opponent was. Uh, Conflict Crackdown could very well be very good against him. Um, what other artifact removal do we have? We just have the destructive tampering, right? We've got two of those. I kind of like bringing in another destructive tampering, but I also kind of like the consulate crackdown. What we cut? He's very defensive. We could cut the Deadeye Harpooner, um, but he does have those flyers, which often like Ink the Super will swing in once, or you know, swing in once or twice, uh, spend its energy. So. Enough artifacts, I think. It, he's clearly the blue red deck. The blue red deck loves artifacts. It, it, it plays improvised, uh, it plays a bunch of improvised cards, it really likes all that sort of thing. Uh, we didn't see much removal from him, but you know, that's not saying much. It's possible we could play less creatures, but it's really hard. I'm going to cut the. Um, Age of Automaton. He hasn't actually been that impressive for me so far. Uh, you may have noticed in a lot of our games he's been sitting there not doing a lot. It's partly because we've never drawn our own range giant, uh, which is kind of part of the reason he's in the deck. Uh, and sometimes he's been there and kind of, you know, he's been a nice backup plan, just in case our opponent has a removal spell. But, I don't know. Let's see how the deck feels without him. Let's see how we, uh, how we move forward. This hand's like very keepable on the draw. Um, and we're leaning really hard on this guy. If this guy dies, then we aren't doing a lot. Hmm. Hmm. I think I am going to keep it, but I think it's much closer than I re originally. What I just said, I think, implies that it's like uh, this snap keep amazing hand. Uh, The natural feelings are a lot more mixed right now. I think we'll definitely keep it against the six. Uh, I think that if our opponent goes to six, he's kept his hand. Okay, so we're we're playing against the six. The likelihood that he has the removal spell for the trinketeer is so much lower when he's on six. Ooh. Okay, so I think we made the right call bringing in the crackdown. Universal solvent. It's a really weird card, actually. Um, I've never been sure if it's been good or not. It's been good when I flooded out in some of the games I played as a blue-red uh, improvised deck. Uh, but I think it's probably my least favorite of um, the playable one-mana artifacts. Ooh, what? Either our opponent is three-color, or he's shifted deck in the sideboarding phase and is now a black-red artifact deck. That could be interesting. Um, or he just seemed like he's, he's, he's uh, splashing black, or maybe he's splashing blue. But we saw two blue cards. It's unlikely he's splashing blue. Okay. So it's actually kind of sad. I almost just want to play out. I almost just want to do nothing. But um, I think we still play out the Master Stringer here. I think that the upside of getting to untap with the man is very high. We might get to. Ooh, Spire of Industry. This is actually worth something. So, like three tickets on Moto. 
and also in paper, it's worth something. That's good. Rainbow lands are good. Mana confluence is good. This also explains. Yeah, I would probably be much happier um, playing the uh, like the uh, kind of Grixisy improvised deck if I had a Spire of Industry in my deck. I'd be be pretty confident, I think, at that point. So, obviously one of the reasons why this guy is good is because he's kind of hard to fight effectively. You know, our shock deals with the 2-2 two -two body on the ground, it's not very impressive. It deals with one of the flyers, that's even less impressive. Um, we're playing trying to keep it because we want to keep up on board. Uh, obviously we could hold up Acrobatic Maneuver, slash Build to Smash, slash, you know, whatever. If he doesn't swing at all, then we're pretty happy. Swinging with Josh the Thopters makes sense, though. Um, I don't think you're all that interested in, like, profitably blocking the Treasure Keeper. Okay. Uh, we could swing in with both. But I think I'm happier having the Trinketeers stay back and make two twos. And if our opponent goes for some kind of... Okay, it's not a removal spell, but... Uh, In this scenario, I'm pretty happy uh, built to smashing here, rather than shocking. I think shock has a bit more... Um, so probably obviously we get the trample value. Uh, obviously we didn't have to kill this, but because if we have all these three power creatures, it's going to make our life quite difficult from here on out, if this sticks around. Um, so I'm quite happy trading a Belt of Smash for a Shield of Ether Thief, even though Shield of Ether Thief is also not a card that generally trades for a card. But then also only has three cards in hand, so denying them any source of card draw is going to be um, a very relevant thing to be doing. Don't kill my trinket here, please. Uh, there's always this tension, right, of you don't want to tap out of Acrobatic Maneuver to activate your Master Trinket here, but you also want to activate your Master Trinket here, because it's a really good card. Uh. Oop, more, more things. Another Shield of Ether Thief. Okay. That is... acceptable, my friend. You might block here. Uh, the Sopterist on the servo. Sopterist has kind of done his job, right? If he's in black, he has, might have some of the raised deads, so he might be able to you know, pull it back, play it again. That sounds really good. I'm pretty happy trading a servo for that, though. I don't think I don't swing with the servo. Uh, sure, happens. As described, I'm going to shock this. Again, um, it's quite aggressive, but he only has two cards in hand. Uh, unless he does, if he pulls out that um, stupid card I was just talking about, the raised dead, that draws a card, I'll be very unhappy, because he'll, uh, he'll crush me by pulling back this Maverick Thopterist and just playing it again. Um, but if he doesn't have that, then I think I'm pretty happy just keeping him off of card draw, because the way he pulls back into the game is he kind of starts to pull, he, starts, he draws an answer for our Master Trinket here, and then, you know, a series of sad things that occurs. Malfunctioning of Treasure Keeper. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty happy cycling this to bring back Treasure Keeper instead of making it 2-2. Two -two. This just has a higher impact on our our play. Detrail Hawk is quite interesting. Our opponent only has one mana open, so I'm pretty happy. Swinging for six here. Feel pretty safe. Um, we're not leaving anything up, but uh, we're showing him a lot of one mana red spells. So it's, you know, he has to be thinking about whether or not we have that. We have to make sure we keep one mana, one white mana open. Well, we don't have uh, Ali Escape or whatever it's called, the one mana good white combat trick. Um, I think we want to represent it as much as possible. Uh, doesn't matter anymore, though. Okay, he kills this. 
So he doesn't do much else with his turn. He puts himself in a situation where he's still losing quite fast, I think. So this is a weird scenario. Like, so I've noticed that this in Ether Revolt, they have a couple of cards. You have any expertise in this one, I think, that on Modo, um, you'll actually see the weird moment in the game where the card is dead. So, you know, it's a 1 it's a 1 0. But not dead yet, because. You know, because the spell hasn't finished resolving. That first bit has happened, but the second bit of the spell hasn't happened, so he's he's scrying, or with your handy's expertise, they're playing a card. All those sorts of things. Um, oh, baby. Just what the doctor ordered. Um... Yeah, let's just swing with everything. We could give this guy flying, I think that's what we're going to do. Um, it makes it worse if we play... Let's not give that guy flying. I don't think it's relevant, and um, we don't have very many other energy cards, but if we draw, draw Scrapper Champion off the top, giving it a plus one plus one counter, um, or an additional plus one plus one counter, might be more relevant than um, giving a, a servo flying. Because we're quite happy for the servo to trade with Wilder Automaton if that's what he'd like to do. Um, and if World Automaton wants to chump the Treasure Keeper, that's also fine. Opponent's getting kind of unlucky, but I'm also I'm intrigued by what his mana base looks like. This could just be a really bad draw from him. Um, but a, he's played, you know, predominantly blue spells. Every coloured spell he's played, except for Cruel Finality, has been a blue spell. Um, zero Islands. Like, that's obviously been a big deal for him, right? He's He's been uh, bottlenecked on spells he can cast a turn. So he, you know, he was at four mana and could only cast one shield of ether thief because he drew the spire of industry. Uh, Consulate crackdown sounds pretty good right now. It doesn't even deal with that many of the things that he's played. It kills, you know, some of the the stuff. Ooh, release the gremlins. Consider me wrecked, my friend. Consider me wrecked. Well, we get a prophetic prism. Not the most exciting of draws, but uh, it does it does replace. It means the treasure keeper did kind of you know, replace itself. Pretty happy we didn't draw that for our, uh, our draw this turn. Good old Modo, uh, keeping itself up to date with token art. It's a shame the Gremlin token art's actually really good. It's really solid art. Oh man, might lose now. Can we activate this? I don't think we can. I don't think we have anything that leaves the battlefield. Can we... Is there a purpose of swinging for one? Instead of holding back this Thopter? I don't think so. Play everything in our hand. I don't think I want to though. Uh, if we swing for one, he goes to five. We could then destructive tampering if we wanted to, and then maybe if we need to do caught in the bright to the sculptor, and then put him to three. Or put him to two, even. Doesn't sound that impressive. I am going to start swinging, though. I think that um, because I have this destructive tampering in hand, uh, say I draw another creature. Then I'm in this situation where it's it's very possible that like one damage could make the difference between uh, winning and losing. We're in a slightly precarious position. That release the gremlins was really strong, even if it didn't look that impressive. It killed you know a servo and a um, treasure keeper. You know, the fact that it also made four four of stats uh, was quite quite major. The angel would be a pretty good draw right now. The angel would be pretty insane. He has this universal solvent, though, right? Um, so we, if we do the angel, we'd probably actually want to to blow up that up with uh, destructive tampering. So this is five, and we go to six. It's a pretty scary place to be. Oh man, this is tough. 
We can then go to 5 because of this. Okay, I think I'm more interested in blocking because he has this Welder Automaton. Even though I have the sort of Tempering. I think I want to... I, I have a lot more live draws. I think the... He goes to 4. Plays Ether Swooper. Gets his stuff. Okay, Salivating Gremlins is a pretty good draw right now. I feel pretty good about it. Um, we are very possibly going to court in the right this Ether Swooper. Very possibly, I mean, we are going to court in the right this Ether Swooper. So we can Eddie Trail Hawk, hit him to three. Um, so we're setting up for a potential lethal next turn. Where he's at three, we can give this flying and blow up this if he holds it back on defense. One, two, three, four, five, six. He does not have enough mana to activate his universal solvent. So I think we've got this locked up. I don't think he can win. He has to have pulled something pretty nasty to uh, to pull it back, I think. Okay, that implies that he has something going on. Or well, just doesn't see this. So maybe he has another, got another ether swooper. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Is it implement a combustion? Oh, okay, no, no, it just makes it lethal, right? We um we play it, it buffs the salivating gremlin, it deals one to him, it it, do, it makes toast. This card makes toast, guys. It is so good. I know, I know. It it doesn't look like a lot. Boy does it not. But uh It's good. Hey, there we are. Right on time. Uh, things being able to block is irrelevant. Opponent has no cards in hand and cannot play any blue or black cards because otherwise they'll die even harder than they already are. Yeah, I think we're just uh, just gone locked up. Plus, I forgot about Israel Hawk's ability. Flying Gremlins. Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna pick me once. It's about sending a message, guys. And this man, this man Jiddler, he understands that. Well, that was match two. Uh, again, went pretty well. Let's catch you in match three.